Hello everybody, good afternoon. I hope you're having a wonderful Tuesday and welcome to our new lockdown uh, series maybe. Um, so this time in lockdown we are doing something called our stories and the reason behind our stories was I was talking to someone um, a couple of weeks ago and they and I was kind of maybe moaning a little bit saying oh I'm running out of ideas what can I do on social media and someone said to me Charlotte people just love to hear about what you do and about you as a person and um maybe not always about what you're doing in your shop but other things that you do and so that then gave me the idea that maybe we could do that for all of my wedding supplier friends so that people get to know their story know the actual person behind the um, job that they do so this is the first one and I'm very, very excited to have with me a friend of mine that I met an, exactly a year ago today called Jane. And we met at a wedding fair. Um, I hadn't even opened the shop at this time. I was still decorating and planning it all. And we met at this wedding fair and it was actually my irregular choice shoes that made us spark a conversation up. Um, so Jane is a celebrant and I will bring her in now and she can chat to you about what she does and what her story is. So hello Jane, welcome to hello. our stories. Hello. Thank you, thank you so much for agreeing to be our first guest. It's lovely to have you. I feel a bit like a guinea pig. <laughs> no, don't feel like that at all. So um, very quickly, how are you? How are you doing in lockdown number three or 400, wherever we're at now? Well, uh, personally, I'm actually fine. Thank you very much. But uh, really, really bored this time. Uh -huh. and yeah, <laughs> so, summer was great because um, I was out in the garden and got the most fantastic suntan I've ever had. But um, this time, all the grey skies and the rain, it's, uh, it's a bit harder. But um, I've been really, really busy, not with weddings, but with the funeral side of my business. Uh, and that's, that's a bit bittersweet, really, isn't it? Because nobody wants to be busy with funerals but for you as a celebrant that is one of the main roles of your job it is actually um my business is more um well <laughs> for this last 12 months anyway it, it's been yeah. more focus, focused on the funeral side but on the upside i get to meet some absolutely fabulous families and yeah. to be able to help family say goodbye um is very very rewarding yeah but ho hopefully my brides are still out there and uh it won't be too long before we're uh all getting together for yeah. wedding ceremonies. Yeah. yeah yeah well i think we've all got a lot to celebrate as soon as we can haven't we oh hopefully yes i've got the champagne uh all ready to be opened <laughs> No. As soon as we get let out, yeah. <laughs> my, my passport is covered in cobwebs at the moment. Oh, I don't. I think we're all longing for a holiday, aren't we? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, shall we first of all start just really simply, and will you tell us your story? So um, a bit about you, a bit about your life, how you got into this career, basically your story in a nutshell. <laughs> well, yeah, if people are going to find it interesting, I will. Yeah. Um, I'll cut out, uh, you know, the first 30 years because that's very, very boring. <laughs> Other than uh, I met my lovely husband and uh, we got married. Um, for 30 years, I was uh, CEO of a multi million pound buying group of independent electrical wholesalers. Now, I'm sure that sounds incredibly boring and uninteresting. And when I say that, people's eyes are going to glaze over. Uh, I had the most glamorous working life because I got to travel all over the world. I organized conferences uh, in Canada, 
um, Dubai, every European city you can think of in between. It was um, a totally male dominated um, organization. I was the only woman uh, at my level. And so everybody knew who Jane Gowell was. And I would go to lots and lots of business dinners each year. And you would see rows and rows of men all wearing uh, DJs, black tie, etc. And I would get introduced to people. And because of who I was, and they wanted to sell their products to my members, the electrical wholesalers, they all remembered me. And I would see them six months later. And they'd come up to me and they'd say, Jane, hi, how are you, etc. And I had no idea who they were. If they were particularly very nice, he's very nice, you would remember them. Or if they were particularly obnoxious or, you know, you, you would probably remember them. And for 30 years, I got away with saying, hello, darling, how are you? <laughs> I love it. The guys used to say, oh, hello, mate, you know, but I couldn't yeah. say hello, mate. So I got away with saying hello, darling, for about 30 years. Um, I got to be president of the European uh, Association that we joined, first woman president, first wow. non-wholesaler president. So it really was a very glamorous life. And... Um, I decided that having organized all those conferences, I would uh, like to get into wedding planning. So the plan was that I would work three days a week for the company and the rest of the week for myself. It's great in theory, but yeah. in practice, it doesn't work because the phone would ring at five o'clock on a Wednesday night, someone with a problem, you can't say to them, oh, well, I can't do anything because I'm off now till Monday yeah, morning. Yeah. So it ended up that I was still working five days a week. So I bit the bullet and said, right, that's it. I will retire, in inverted commas, and uh, go and work for myself. And I tried really, really hard to get into the wedding planning market and I'm sure you're going to have other guests later in the week or in this series, which will tell you how they did it. I couldn't do it. Um, hotels didn't want to know, uh, no, no. or venues. They said, no, we've got our own uh, wedding team, et cetera, et cetera. I spent a fortune on uh, ad advertising in wedding magazines and a friend said to me one day, why don't you look at becoming a registrar? So I investigated that, but um, the commitment uh, that it needed was sort of six days a week whenever they wanted you, which wasn't really going to work for me. So having trawled the internet, I came across celebrants and thought, ah, that's maybe a, a better way of doing it, actually creating the um, wedding ceremonies themselves for brides. Investigated it and uh, came across a, a training organisation called FOIC, Fellowship of Independent Celebrants, and they offered an NOCN course, which there was a qualification to do. So I thought, yeah, that's the one to go for. So at the end of the day, I can say, you know, I've done this, passed the exams, and this is who I am. So to get the NOC qualification, you had to do the funeral side of the course as well. And I said, oh, I don't think I want to do funerals. Anyway, did the course, um, did all the modules for the exam and got my qualification. 
launched myself on all the hotels, um, venues in and around Northamptonshire, Warwickshire, Bedfordshire, and also funeral directors in Northampton. And I qualified in February 2016 and got my first funeral in March 2016. Wow. And meeting the family for the first time was absolutely nothing like they train you to be uh, when, when you're doing the training course. And, um, you know, to do the training, you watch a video where the family is sitting around and they're all answering questions. And I went to see this family and it was awful. <laughs> Um, where, where did your mum go to school? Um, what did she do after she left school? Did she have any brothers and sisters? And it was awful. It was like drawing teeth. Anyway, managed to um, get some information padded out the ceremony with uh, what would have been happening in the world when the lady was X years old and yeah. what might have happened. And uh, funeral director said, that was great, well done. So since then, I've worked for several funeral directors in Northamptonshire and uh, I've done over 300 funerals now. Um, I think most weddings I did in one year was 10. I've done them at a chateau in France, oh. um, a hotel right next to the beach in Spain. And the most yeah. fabulous one I did was at a castle in Italy in 2019 for a Russian couple. And my opening um, speech of welcome, whatever, whatever, I did it in Russian. <gasps> and yes, believe me, me <laughs> <laughs> Russian is not easy. Um, they wrote it out for me in English letters to begin with. Um, and even when it's in English, the pronunciation of the letters isn't the same as it is in uh, Russian. So the oh bride very slowly said each word for me uh, phonetically, and I wrote it all down phonetically, and that was how I was able to deliver it. Um, I think the only word I can remember is spiceba, which is thank you. <laughs> Oh, that sounds, that sounds amazing! Um, uh, because I had to do it because half the um, half the guests uh, were Russian and non-English speaking, oh, so wow. we translated the whole of the ceremony for them. But everyone applauded at the end of my uh, my attempt at Russian. I think I said somewhere in in my opening um, welcome was. Um, the bride's name uh, was Veronica and the, her husband was Vadim. And I said, Vadim has been teaching me to speak Russian. And as you can see, I'm not a very good pupil, <laughs> but everybody loved it. <laughs> so it was fine. <laughs> well, do you know what? You've made being, being a celebrant, a celebrant sound just as glamorous as your other job flying around. Well, yeah, I've, 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 been, I've had the opportunity to go to some uh, lovely places doing yeah. weddings, certainly. But one funny thing I must tell you, I, I spoke to, um, oh, I've, yeah, I've had the opportunity to speak to two or three ladies groups, but, but this was at a wedding. Uh, sorry, I'll get it right in a minute. This was at a funeral. A lady yeah. came up to me after the funeral, and she very quietly uh, came up to me. This is before COVID, and she touched my arm, and she said, you're a celebrant, and I said, yes. She said, does that mean you don't have sex? And I, I paused for a moment and I said, don't have sex. I said, no, 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 no. I said, I'm a celebrant, not celibate. <laughs> 
but it, it, it didn't make me laugh. But I, I have met some wonderful families, really, really wonderful families. And, you know, when you get a little note of thank you after the service saying, oh, we are so pleased and your magic touch has sent mum on her way and, oh. you know, all that sort of stuff. It's lovely, really, really lovely. I think... Um... I mean, I don't know, but I think it must take a special kind of person to be able to stand up in those kind of emotional situations and yeah. provide comfort and um, hold it together and be supportive. Yeah. I don't think we could all do the, that. The, the baby services are the worst. Baby wow. services are the worst. Um, but I did, <laughs> I did one the other day and uh it, it was for an elderly gentleman and um he and his wife had been in lockdown since march and they used to sit in their garden all the time and they used to say to each other it's been a good year for the roses and the family wanted me to say this right at the end of the service and uh his coffin was covered in the most beautiful arrangement deep red roses and the music they had at the end was it's been a good year for the roses and i said you know we're now really at the end of our service and my final words today are what x and y used to say to each other in their garden and you know i had to take the deepest breath imaginable before I could say and they always used to say to each other it's been oh a good God. year for the roses and then the music started and at the end the funeral director said to me oh she said you nearly lost it there didn't you and I said yeah and mm -hmm. people know whatever I say it's coming from here it's yeah. not just words on a page and uh yeah it's That's been so really interesting, yeah. Yes. Um, so just talking about you a little bit more. Okay. What, what would you say is one of your most defining moments for you as a person? I think it was when I was doing the wedding in France. It was at a family chateau. It was August sun was shining i'd flown out to limoges hired a car driven 120 miles to where the family lived standing in the grounds of this chateau thinking oh my lord i am here in front of all these people ah jane you finally made it, <laughs> it, it didn't matter the 30 years I'd uh, worked for my company, standing up in front of 120 guys and delivering a presentation and, you know, organising all those events all over the world, to have the confidence of that family that I could do whatever they wanted on that day yeah. for their daughter who had vowed that she would never, ever get married. Uh, and her mum had said, uh, well, I want to do something at the ceremony because mums never do. And she said, I'm going to read a poem and I'm going to do this. She stood up to read this poem and she got about five words out <laughs> and she was in bits. It was, it was a wonderful day and I was yeah. so proud to be part of it, yeah. That must be so lovely. How do you, do you um, take a little bit of something from every ceremony that you do so that you remember? Or do you have a memory book or are there just certain ones that stick in your mind? Um, I don't have a memory book. I, I've got a copy of every service I've ever oh. delivered, be it a, a wedding or a, a funeral. And you take a little bit of that family with you on the rest of your journey if you like somebody said to me once um 
when an old person dies, it's like a library closing, all those memories are lost. And I think, oh, I, I mustn't lose any of my memories. Um, each of my brides, I remember something from the, from the day, like one I did in December, uh, one of my uh, early ones, it was a freezing cold day. And the bride wanted all the photographs taken outside. <laughs> and all the bridesmaids rushed inside and put their trousers on underneath their long dresses. Everybody was blue with cold. It was absolutely Aww. freezing. Or the bride that had Converse trainers with bride in rhinestones along the side of the trainers. Yeah. Now, that was a really interesting one. Um, I did the service or ceremony in the hall of the school where they met each other oh, wow. when they were about seven or eight years old. We, oh. even, we even made it into national press. It was in the Daily Mail and the Daily Express. But unfortunately, nobody mentioned my name. No. They were like, oh, no, all that publicity I could have got from that. But it was so funny because my husband was reading the newspaper. Yeah. And there were all yeah. these photographs in the newspaper. And he said, uh, he said, is that you? Oh, no, he didn't. Sorry. He said, look, he said, that's your wedding that you did a few weeks ago. And I said, yeah. And it was a sideways picture of me. And I said, look, it's me. I <laughs> recognize me. Sideways picture. Oh. What, what, it, what it has taught me with these photographs from brides is don't sit down. Because you stand there and you look at yourself and where they've taken, sorry, I've got to speak without my hands, where they've taken a full length shot of you, yeah. you've got crosses across the skirt of your dress or your suit or whatever you're wearing. So don't, if you're having photographs taken, don't sit down beforehand. <laughs> That's a brilliant tip. <laughs> um, so for any maybe potential brides out there, what is the most important thing we should know about you? So Jane, not necessarily Jane as the celebrant, just Jane. Um, well, I hope from this um, clip, this film, uh, people will see what a sense of humour I've got and uh, my sense of empathy and getting to know you. Your wedding is all about you. Um, your mum, your mum-in-law, your aunts and uncles, they can have as much input as you like. But the day is about you. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want me to say on your behalf, I take on board and you get what I always call director's cut on the final ceremony. The words that I say will be written for you, approved by you, changed or altered or added to by you, your day. I know it's a trite saying, your day, your way, but it really, really is. At the end of the day, it's all about you. I think it has to be, doesn't it? It's. Um, I think that would be one of the biggest regrets. If you don't do exactly what you want to do, you'll always wish that you did. Absolutely, yeah. You can change your, you know, you can agonise for hours about the cake, about the colour of the napkins, about the seating plan. But the most important part of that day is going to be that, half an hour or 45 minute ceremony where you are standing in front of the man you love, uh, the girl you love, whoever you decide to make that commitment to for the rest of your life, those words that you're going to exchange with each other in that little short time span are the most important part of the whole day. Yeah, definitely. 
It's so special and all of those people, once they're there in that room with you, whether they've had an input or not, it kind of goes to the back of everybody's minds, doesn't it? It's just special. It. It's yeah, happening they're, they're, they're focused on you. For that half an hour, you are the centre of the universe. It's all about you. <laughs> yeah. Which is what it's supposed to be. Which is what it's supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Um, just going to say hello to Louise. Um, she's watching at the moment and also to Steve he said um, hello to the both of us and telling us that he's watching now so hello to everybody that's watching okay um, I've just got a few more questions if that's okay Please, go ahead. Um, I've, I've rabbited on far too long <laughs> <laughs> Why, thank you, Daft. It's so interesting. Um, now, I know we spoke about this one before we went live, um, and it's slim pickings on the options for the answer, but what is the best thing that's happened to you in 2020? <laughs> I, I'm going to sound incredibly shallow, and I do apologise in advance. It was getting my hair cut at the end of the first <laughs> lockdown. Um there have been so many disappointments this year um holidays cancelled um weddings cancelled um yeah really the, there is no defining moment in 2020 for me really um honestly hands on heart i really cannot <laughs> cannot justify that in any way shape or form <laughs> You know what though, Jane? Getting your hair done is a massive win because you are so glamorous that <laughs> no. you must have felt like a new woman when you came out of that hair. No, I did I had hair down to my shoulders. <gasps> Um, white hair in my father's side of the family. people started to go white when they were about thirty. So um if you want to buy shares in L'Oreal this time, <laughs> go and do it because their root touch up will be coming into its own in the next few weeks, I'm sure. I know. We're all in the same boat, though, aren't we? It's, oh, gosh, It's yeah. the worst thing. Um, sorry, I'm just also going to say hello to Heather from Fashion Vale. She says she's really enjoying this. Jane is so interesting. Oh, thank so you. Really Thanks, Heather. Thank you. Thank Aww. you. Um, so let's just ask a few trivial questions, I suppose, yeah. now. Um, okay. What book are you reading at the moment? At the moment, I'm reading Secrets of the Savoy. Oh. It's, uh, it was a Christmas gift. It's all about um, how um, Richard Doily Cart started the Doily Cart Opera Company. He built the Savoy Theatre so he could put on productions there. And then he built the Savoy Hotel next door. Uh, which was originally for theatre guests and um, artists, but um, he made it the most deluxe hotel in the world. And of course, anybody that's ever had lunch at the Savoy yeah. or bought a drink in the American bar will know it's also one of the most expensive hotels in the world. <laughs> so that's what I'm reading at the moment. And is it good? Would you recommend it? I would, yes, yeah. I would, yeah. Okay. And yeah. Um, what is your favourite box set? Oh, <laughs> well, um, having got uh, Netflix on yeah. the day that lockdown started, on the 23rd of March, yeah. uh, I've watched loads of things. Um, <laughs> I watched Suits, actually, okay. which had Med Meghan Markle in. So I watched the whole of that series. Yeah. Um, I'm watching Billions at the moment oh. with Damien Lewis in. I've yeah. just started the last series, so I'm absolutely glued to that. I have to admit, I don't understand a lot of it. You know, they're buying shorts and buying shares and selling shares. And yeah, but it's that that's great fun. But, but I loved Bridgerton. Anybody oh, that hasn't that. seen it, I yeah can recommend it. Ten out of ten. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a bit naughty. There's a lot of sex scenes. The costumes are out of this world. Are they? But um, Regé Jean Page, the guy that plays the Duke. 
oh my goodness, he could knock on my door any day. <laughs> He's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh, I have to watch it now. <laughs> yeah, really, really good. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Um, hi to Anne's Angels. Not sure who that is, but hello. I don't know if you know them, Jane. Uh, no, I don't. No, no, no. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, hello. hello. Um, so can we just finish, please? Um, can you give us your best, piece of advice and this isn't necessarily about weddings this is maybe your piece of advice that you give to everyone about life in general um talk to people listen when we had the first lockdown and we had to queue at the supermarket i used to say hello to whoever was standing in the queue next to me um you can never stop learning. It doesn't matter whether you're 17 or 70. Every person you come across in this world will be able to tell you something that you didn't know. Um, that's what I'd say. Just talk to people. That's and listen. Like listen. I mean, this, this to me is really strange for me to be sitting here talking for the last half an hour or whatever it is <laughs> about me because I ask people questions I don't say oh hello this is me and this is what I do yeah I always yeah. ask other people questions and uh it's great fun talking to people yeah it so is that's it so is. lovely and Steve said how lovely to listen to Jane such a refreshing and positive outlook on life Oh, and you thank are. you. That is so yeah. kind of you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, thank you much. so much, Jane, for um, being the first person. You're so fascinating. I love talking <laughs> to you. So thank you I so, really, so much. I really, really enjoyed it. So um, if anybody was thinking of doing it and they're not sure about it, I'd say do it. It's um, it's really great. It's been uh, really, really enjoyable. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, I hope to see you for a coffee in the not too distant future, Charlotte. So take oh my care. Goodness, my goodness. Absolutely. Now, just before you go, yeah. can you tell people how to find you on social media if they want to have a bit more of a chat with you or to see what you're up to? Absolutely. I'm um, UK hyphen celebrants, uh, which is my um, Facebook page. Um, I think. I think that's what Louise has got me uh, signed up as. My website is www.wonderfulweddings. Um, no, hang on. Let me give you the full title. <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, God, I've forgotten it. Don't worry. I'll put it on <laughs> so, I am so I'm sorry. So sorry. sorry. There's all these dot coms and no. Um, yeah www.my-wonderful-wedding.com or Amazing. something like that. You look at wonderful, oh, Jesus, you can tell I'm not a techie, can't you? And Louise <laughs> looks awesome. You'll it's find fine. me. Or if you want to phone me, do you want me to give my phone number? Shall it's, I pop it on the bottom of the video so that people yeah, can write that would be that, that okay? would be great. You can do that, yeah. Thank but, you. Uh, Thank you so much, you Jane. Put Jane Gower's celebrant in. I'm sure you will find me somewhere. <laughs> oh, thank you. It's so lovely to see you again. And thank, um, you. thank you so much for telling us all about you. Thanks a lot, Charlotte. Thank you. Bye-bye.